channel now has 2,000 subscribers. Nice, big, big thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Pretty cool that 2,000 violence and nudity obsessed maniacs have collected into one place. That's pretty cool. 2,000 maniacs, gotta love that. Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today, in celebration of 2,000 subscribers, I'm taking a look at 2,000 Maniacs from 1964. Special thanks to Tom for the excellent suggestion. In 1963, Herschel Gordon Lewis got out of the sexploitation scene, and together with legendary exploitation film producer David F. Friedman, he made Blood Feast, which is widely considered to be the very first gore film. <laughs> it was terrible, but it was the first. Aren't first times always terrible? Yes, yes they are. Regardless, it was a huge hit in the drive-in market and Lewis followed it up with two more gore films, Color Me Blood Red and this one, 2000 Maniacs. Of the three, 2000 Maniacs is probably the best one, definitely my favorite of the three, and it's also probably the most accessible, so let's check it out. We open with some mighty fine a picking and a singing. There's a story you should know from a hundred years ago, and a hundred years we've waited now to tell. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. These tree folk here are checking out license plates and detouring certain cars to their town. One of those detoured cars is being driven by the gorgeous Playboy playmate Connie Mason. Uh, she was also in Blood Feast, by the way. Here, she has recently picked up a teacher who had some car trouble. That's Tom, played by her in-real-life husband, William Kerwin. <laughs> that dude was punching way above his weight. The mayor of this town informs the detoured northerners, six now in total, that they are the guest of honor at the town's centennial celebration. They're all a little skeptical, of course, as anyone would be, uh, but, you know, southern hospitality can be pretty convincing, so they go along with it. After they all get settled in their rooms, they make arrangements with the locals to see the town. And the first girl gives the tour one big thumb up. Or, or off, actually. Thumb off. Not to worry, she is taken to the local doctor, and he and his crack team of surgeons make sure she will not have to worry about that thumb pain anymore. Uh, the teacher, Tom, suspects that something's not quite right with this small town. Why would a small southern town want to celebrate the end of the Civil War? Uh, they lost the Civil War. He tries to make a call to one of his colleagues, but can't seem to reach anyone outside of town. The first night, there's a barbecue, but uh, I I'd stay away from the meat. The townsfolk then escort one of the couples back to the hotel, and this man catches an eyeful. Looking at cleavage is like looking at the sun. You don't stare at it. And then the townsfolk take him to the horse races. I wonder how they determine which horse wins the race, since they're all pulling in different directions. Maybe it's like uh, when you make a wish at Thanksgiving with the wishbone. The uh, one who wins is the one who ends up with the biggest piece. So that leaves two couples remaining, and the townsfolk have big plans for them. Lots of fun centennial activities. Uh, way more fun than a barrel full of monkeys. At this point, the final couple are convinced that something's not quite right with this town, and they try to escape. And that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. Well, I've said it before on the channel, but I'm not the biggest fan of Herschel Gordon Lewis, um, although I do like this one. The idea is really cool, a southern town carrying out a murderous celebration to mark the 100 year anniversary of the end of the Civil War. That's a great idea. And Lewis did a great job creating horror out of some of these southern stereotypes. The hospitality that's really a bit sinister, the uncouth primitiveness of southerners, the fat authority figure, the widespread acceptance of extrajudicial punishments. It's all here, and it was here way back in 1964. That's pretty impressive. I mean, this wasn't the first exploitation horror film, of course, but it was an early one, and it was a very influential one. Would we have had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre without 2000 Maniacs? Maybe not. And beyond the film's legacy, the gore holds up pretty well today. Uh, particularly the uh, thumb removal and subsequent arm removal. That, that's pretty good. But the film's not perfect. It's a Herschel Gordon Lewis film. Of course, there are some shortcomings. 
Well, truth be told, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the shortcomings of a Herschel Gordon Lewis film. I mean, we'll be here all day if I start doing that. Uh, but I will say I was a little disappointed that the kills got less graphic as the movie goes, uh, rather than building up to a nice murder set piece. Maybe there was a reason for this, but I can't think what that would be. I mean, that first kill, the thumb removal and then the arm removal, that's the best one in the movie, and that's the first one. Also, we've got a gorgeous Playboy Playmate in this movie, and we don't get to see any more of her than a lifted dress when she washes up in a small pond. Come on now, Herschel Gordon Lewis. I mean, I suppose he was concerned with censorship. I mean, this was 1964 after all, but still, uh, in 1964, nudie films were well established. I'm sure he could have gotten away with more than he got away with. But overall, is this a great movie? No, it's not a great movie. Uh, but it is maybe the best Herschel Gordon Lewis movie, and if you're curious about his work, uh, this is the place to start. If you want more, you can go on to uh, The Gore Gore Girls or The Wizard of Gore. Those are both pretty fun, too. Mm -hmm.